Amen. Listen, we're going to do for the next two weeks, and then also we're going to carry over into the new year um, a series entitled Living on 80. Living on 80. Uh, and really what we look at tonight is the principle, and the principle is 10, 10, 80. Uh, you heard Andy Stanley or other uh, preachers, theologians, people who deal with finance, you may have heard this term, this principle, uh, which I have become accustomed to and try my best to practice. Uh, and, but this is the end result. This is where we want to be 10, 10, 80. So when you hear 10, 10, 80, this is the principle. This is where we want to be. Uh, as a people, as a body of Christ, uh, this is where we want to be. Now, here's, here's the question. When we look at the first 10, first 10%, the first 10% deals with God. It's a, it's a requirement. The first 10% deals with God. It's a requirement. And when you say requirement, that not, that's not an option. That's a command. So really, when you look at the first 10, that has not, nothing to do with us giving. We're not giving anything because it already belongs to God. Go to Deuteronomy 14.22. Deuteronomy 14.22. Uh, when you look at 10, 10, 80. First 10... First 10% is God. It's a requirement. Deuteronomy 14.22. What does it say when you're there? Okay, you should tie all. Now, the key word I need you to hear here is all. Circle, highlight that word all. A. L L. Uh, the requirement is that we give all the tithe. We give all the ten to God. Now, on a more deeper study, uh, the question is, are we dealing with gross or are we dealing with net? Because I want to argue that if you're dealing with net, that's not all. Why isn't it all? Because Blue Cross Blue Shields, first of all, Uncle Sam going to take his. Blue Cross Blue Shields going to take theirs. Uh, any type of United Way, all those other charities you want to give to, they're going to take theirs. All these other benefits, they're going to take theirs. And then you are left with a net. There's stuff that falls down and you are left with what's in the net after everything else is taken. So, according to Deuteronomy 14.22, he deals with all. Okay? All is gross tithe. <laughs> gross tithe. And, uh, and so, we have to get to a level of processing of understanding to move from being net tithers to gross tithe. Because according to the word of God, it's gross now, the reason why we have an issue with this is all dealing with this call aiding. We'll get there, okay? So again, the first 10 is whom? God. It's a requirement. So really, with the first 10, you and I haven't given anything. That's why in the Old Testament, it talks about tithe. Tithe is already established. And when you get to the New Testament, you hear more of offering, more of giving. He don't have to repeat anything in the New Testament because from the Old Testament, it's already established that that's already God. So what he is saying now in the New Testament is, give above your tithe. That's really when you begin to give. Okay. Now, the next 10 is pay yourself. Next 10 is pay yourself. Which means all of us are going to have an issue that we need some extra money. So we're going to have to go to our cousin them and say, can you let me hold some? You're going to have a flat tire? The, the hot water heater going to go out? You're going to have some issue in your life, maybe a medical issue. And you're going to look in your money market, you're going to look in your savings, and it's going to say balance zero. <laughs> and now you got to dip into your checking or dip into the funds. And guess what we're going to come and get first? That which don't belong to us. And so look what Malachi said, you're robbing God. And so it's because I didn't pay myself because three months, six months, five years down the road, I don't have it. 
I don't have it. So if something happened, I got to have $500, and when I look in my account, I don't have nothing. So I got to now dip into the bill money, into the overhead money, into the checking money. And guess what? I'm through. Now I'm, I'm fighting this thing from behind the scenes. Okay? So, so, so 10, 10, the first two. First two, when you get your check, whether you are at the net or growth stage, my prayers now as a process, all of us began to move to a growth stage. That, that's choice. All of this is choice. It's not demand. It's not forcing. Even with the requirement, God said, it's your choice to honor me with what is already mine. Okay? Now, here's the issue. The issue is 80%. The issue is my lifestyle has to fit the principle. The problem is, Brother Dennis, I want the principle to fit my lifestyle. What I want to do is, say for example, say, let's say net. I brought home $800. What I want to do is live off the whole $800. Can I live off the whole $800? Well, I, live, I, I do my 10. You can't live off the 90% because what happens when your tie go flat? What happens when you got to the, go to the hospital and pay out-of-pocket, unexpected out-of-pocket expenses? What happened then? You don't have it. Put it away so you don't see it. Then when it happened, you got it. So what happens is if I, if I take out, if 10% of 800 is $80, if I take out 80, to take out another 80 to myself, Right? Now, again, watch this. You may not be able to do the whole 10% of yourself right now. And we'll get to that later. But at least you can take out 40. At least you can take out 25. Take out some. Now, you can't shortchange this. <laughs> well, I give them 40. No, that's 5%. <laughs> you, can't, you can't do that. that. That's a requirement. Okay? That's a requirement. And so what happens is, here's the problem. But, but, but Pastor, I, I can't do this because... Of my lifestyle. See, the problem is I put my lifestyle over the principle. Here I am, want to hold on to stuff that's killing me instead of reducing it. You know, good way, you can't afford that. Reduce. Why are you driving that car that you know you paying six hundred dollars a month? Why? Reduce. The only time they're gonna say, "Look at you," is the first time. <laughs> that thing bad. First time. Can't stop looking at it. First time. You good until that first car note come. And you sick. You sick because you want to impress other folk that you don't even like. You just want to compete with them. And that's the problem we have. We want to compete with each other instead of collaborate. So when you get a new car, I want to get a new car. You get a new house, I want to get a new house. You get an additional sunroom, I want to get a new sunroom. You know, all this stuff. Right? And so you got to understand that the only way this thing works is that the lifestyle must fit the principle, which means I, have got the, I must get myself to a place where I actually live off of 80%. If I can't live off of 640, I'm living too high. So what you mean? That means whatever is straining you, let it go. Why well, can't? Yes, you can. Call. You know all them bill collectors have been calling you? You don't ask the phone? Call them. For once in your life, call them. And say, so, you know what? I can't. That's why I've been. That's why I'm back behind six months. Uh, I need some help. I need some help because they want their money. They're gonna try to help you out any kind of way. You may got to consolidate. We'll look at different plans. How you can do that? That's later on. But at the same time, you and I have to get to a place where we live off of eighty percent and stop trying to impress folk who ain't studying us. You guys, you gotta learn how to sleep at night. Y'all with me? So. Again, the lifestyle must fit the principle. The principle can't. And what we don't want to do is, here's the problem. We don't want to give this up. We don't want to give this up. Every time you go to the mall, you have to buy it. We don't want to give this up. That's why we ain't got no space now. No, you got to give this up. You, 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 don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't really have to have more income. You just don't want to give this up. You, 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 you one person. Why are you living in a four-bedroom house that's costing you almost $1,000 a month? That's stupid. Reduce. You one person. Get you a one-person apartment. You have that many sleepovers? That many cousins got to have other rooms? Really? No. You just want to impress somebody. You got your big house. 
You don't need it. It's killing you. It's killing you. And instead of you enjoying the joys of the Lord, you're miserable. And that's the misery that you can't shout away. That's why when you come to church on Sunday, you're good for two seconds. And then when you leave, you're back miserable. Come on, won't God do it for me? Because you won't do it for yourself. Look at somebody say, stupid. <laughs> 10, 10, 80. We have got to, and this congregation will do that. This congregation, I know, we, God's going to bless us through this, that we get to a place because I want us to be prosperous. So prosperous doesn't mean you got a whole lot of money. We're going we're gonna to deal with what's wealth because wealth ain't what we think it is. When you got a peace of mind, I don't care if you got a small house, but you sleep the same way. <laughs> you eat your cereals, you, you eat all it, you, you, you wake up and you're good. You don't need all that stuff because it's killing you. It's killing you. So 10 to 8. Now here, this is the conclusion. This is where we have to get to. So the question is, how do we do that? How do we do that? We got to have a perspective. Psalm 24 and 1. Psalm 24 and 1. We should know this. The earth is what? The earth is the Lord's and the Lord is thereof. Where are they? Lift up. No, that ain't it. <laughs> and they who dwell therein. Watch this. Everything belongs to whom? The Lord. So if everything belongs to the Lord, why are we worried about anything else? Why are we worried about what we have if it belongs to the Lord? I don't own it. I have to manage it. So here's the key though. If we as believers manage God's resources according to his direction, he will entrust us with more. I want you to look at this last word here. More. And if you ain't too dignified tonight, all of us want more. If you ain't too saved, ain't too bougie tonight, you can admit all of us want more. And that's okay. Because that is the diagram of our life. John 10.10, 10, the enemy comes to what? Steal, kill. But I come to give you what? And ha give it what? Abundantly means more. He says, I'm coming to give you more life. I want you to enjoy this earth. I put you in this earth to rule, to have dominion, but you do it in partnership with one another. Now check this out. The three words I underline. Manage, direction, more. If we manage it God's way, if we follow God's direction, we have more. But if I try to do it my way, I may still have more, but this more brings misery. Are you with me? So what is wealth? This is an open question. What is wealth? Anybody? When you think about wealth, what is it? Life, health, Okay, good. Life, health, What else? Peace of mind. Peace of mind. Learning to live without stuff you really don't need. Learn to live without stuff you really need. That's good. That's great answers. Now, give me. Now, now what is real? What, what, when you think about wealth, what do you think about? I don't tell you who I think about. I think about uh, President elect Trump. <laughs> 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 I think about President Elect Trump. I think about billionaire. I think about possessions. I think about cars. I think about how they just, just doing the money. Not in the strip club, but you know how they just do the money. I'm just saying. They just, they, they, you know, y'all so saved tonight. When I think about wealth, I think about stuff. I, I, I think about stuff when I think about wealth. But you know what? What y'all just answered, y'all right on key. The first three answers, y'all right on key. Because what happens is, when you look at wealth, when God looks at wealth, he's concerned about our perspectives, which means attitudes, about money and possessions. Neither what we have or do not have affects our relationship with God, but our attitudes do. So what is my attitude towards money and possessions? And my attitude will determine my character. So my thing is, when I don't have it, am I angry? When I don't have it, am I depressed? Or when I have more, am I still angry because I don't have more? Or am I depressed because it seems like it still don't make me happy? Y'all with me? So God is more concerned about our attitude toward it. He ain't worried about if we have it or not because guess what? 
Everything belongs to him. So he's not concerned about what you have or how much you have or what little you have or how little you have. He's not concerned about that because it all belongs to him. But, but how are we when it comes to these things? Are we angry? Are we depressed? Are we stuck up? Are we haughty? Do we need more? Are we greedy? Are we deceitful? What, what happens in this area? That's where God is at because you got to understand we don't want this thing to taint our character because when it does it gives a foothold to Satan. Satan can use it. Our attitude. To shackle and trap us. Y'all should know this scripture. Hebrews 13.5 What we have to learn how to do is keep our lives and the lives here in this text means character. We got to keep our character free. What is Hebrews 13.5? We're going to be going through some scriptures tonight. So get those Bibles ready. Hebrews 13.5 says what? Can't hear you. What Hebrews 13.5 says? Get there. Stay away from the love of money. Be satisfied. Be content with what you have. For God has said, I will never, never fail you, not forsake you. Wow. Have you ever heard the preacher say, uh, how many of you know God won't leave you or forsake you? Yeah. yeah, he won't leave. I know he won't leave. I won't even, God never leave you. We say that so many times and don't understand the context in which it's used. And what he's simply saying is that Keep your lives, keep your character free from the love of money. Ain't nothing wrong with money. It's our attitude toward money. Gotta have it. Or, why don't I have, why don't I have it? Y'all with me? But be content with what you have. And if we would take a poll tonight, I think the poll would say that some of us are not content with what we have. And we have to be content with what we have. Keep our character free. Why? Because God will never leave me nor forsake me even in the lacking stages of my life. God won't leave me. Are you with me? So that's the perspective. That's the attitude um, we must have. Are there any questions? I don't want to go too fast, too quick. Got a lot of information to cover. Any, any other questions? Any comments? Okay. Here's some dangers. Let's look at this perspective. Go, go to Proverbs 30 and 7 through 9. Proverbs 7, 37, 7 through 9. And I want you to read that. Th these are two principles here, two, two things here uh, in these verses. Uh, and remember the word content that we just talked about. But the questions we want to ask or try to answer from this, these two verses, three verses rather, is the danger of riches and the danger of poverty. What do you have? Seven, eight, nine. Who has it? Two things. Yes, sir. You deprive me not before I die. Mm -hmm. Remove falsehood and lies far from me. Yes. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me the food or lot of Least I be fool and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? Right. Unless I be fool and steal yeah. and profane the name of my God. Wow. The, the, this whole subject here in these three verses is truth. It's speaking truth. And it's also saying, Lord, give me enough to live on. Don't give me too much. Don't give me too little. But get, keep me in the right symmetry, the right balance of life. Give me a balanced life. Now, here it is. The danger of riches is. Look at, look at the very, verse 9. Because what he's saying is, again, neither poverty nor riches. You see that? Feed me with food that I need. In other words, God, give me enough to live on. Enough to live on. Let me be content. But look at verse 9. Or I shall be what? Fool. That's talking about riches. I should, be, I should be full. Here it is. And deny you and say, who is the Lord? What he's basically saying is this. He's basically saying, I don't want to be content without you. Remember we were talking about a couple weeks ago. Uh, we were talking about dead spots. It should bother us when I don't have a signal from the Lord. He says, whenever I get so rich, so full. Amen. That, that, I'm no, that I am content without him. 
that I even say, who is the Lord? Because guess what? When I look in the mirror, uh, Dennis, I actually become God. Yep. It's all about me. You hear me? It, it's all about me. It, 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 becomes, it becomes about me. That is where, that is where we draw a line. So danger of riches is I'll, com- I'll be content without God. That is the danger. And then the net says, or shall be what? Poor and steal and profane the name of God. That's talking about honesty versus dishonesty. God, I don't want to be so poor that I got to steal, that I got to hustle, that I got to kill somebody and take what's theirs. Y'all with me? So God, I want perfect balance. Don't Lord, and, and understand here. Here's, here's another text. The poor will always be with you. That's not the poor that's so low that they are dishonest enough to steal and kill you and, and take what you. He's not my talking about that type of poverty. This poverty is when you're so low, and that's what happens when people are in poverty. They're so low, they're trapped. They don't care who you are. They'll blow your head off and take your two dollars. And you say, "Dang, they killed somebody over thirty dollars." Yes. Because it was a mindset of I have to survive today. And if it means killing you to take $30, I'm going to do that for me to get through the day. And then I have to kill somebody else or take for somebody else on tomorrow. Because now I refuse to even uh, um, um, look at life as something that's valuable. I don't even value my own life. See, y'all see the difference here? So, so that's the danger. The danger is, 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 is that I don't want to be so high. That I am content without you. Nor do I want to be so low. That I don't value other people's lives. I don't even value mine. Those are the dangers. When you look at money. Okay. But number two. Here's a perspective. Borrowing money. You with me? Borrowing money. Is not a problem. But simply a financial obligation. Y'all hear me? The problem is when we fail to honor the agreement of the financial obligation. That's the problem. Borrowing money. All of us. If you have lived long enough, you've had to borrow money. Either you had to borrow from a banking institution or you had to borrow from Uncle Joe. I'm joking, you let me hold, hold some. Whatever it was, you had now, it wasn't a problem to doing that because sometimes we can't be so prideful that we that we don't that we refuse help. Sometimes you need help. Yeah, you need to borrow some money. That's okay. God don't speak against that. Okay, we're gonna talk about what he does speak against when you're talking about borrowing, but at the same time, it's a financial obligation. But when we fail to honor it, when we fail the when we fail to pay it back. That's when there becomes an issue with borrowing money because when I don't pay back Brother Fred, then I'm not going to uh, pay back Sister Maddie, and I'm not going to pay back Reverend Evans because I'm already in a hole with Brother Fred, in a hole with Sister Maddie. So now I go to some new bait because Reverend Evans, he's so nice. He smiles all the time, and I know if I just talk to him and say, the Lord's using me, Reverend Evans, but I, I just got some hard time. Sure, I'll help you out. That's what he'll say. And so now what happens is, because I borrowed from you, Brother Fred, I feel some type of way, and I feel suspect. So I feel, I'm distant from you now. And so f- I used to come to Mount Calvary. But because you go to Mount Calvary, and I know I owe you money, the reason why I won't come is because I may see you. <laughs> Sister Maddie, I see her everywhere. But I won't go to that place that I know Sister Maddie going to be. And when I see Brother Evans, because my son go to the school that he's working at, I ain't going to make sure I'm going to just let him go in. I ain't going to go, walk me in, Daddy. Uh-uh, you walk in yourself. Because I don't want to see Reverend Evans. You see what we began? We began to get trapped. We come to get trapped because, because now I borrowed. Now it's not so much of not answer the phone. Who that? Oh, don't answer the phone. Oh, come on. Come on, raise your hand. You ain't had money all that your life. Raise your hand if you know you didn't answer the phone because you knew that number was. You know who that number was? Or you just slipped and answered the phone one day and say, hello, and then they call you by your government name. Uh, hello? Uh, hello? 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 <laughs> you, but then you make sure you remember that though when they call back. <laughs> Man, I speak 
to marry a little John? Oh, that's not Lamont. No. <laughs> so the point I'm trying to make. Oh, y'all so saved. Y'all ain't never happy. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to tell you what happens. Is, let me let me help you out. All the same folk in here. Let me help you out because some of you are on the other side of this, and you have had folk to borrow money from you. And and even though it may have been it may have been as low as ten dollars, it may have been as high as five hundred or more. And what I when I just said. I won't come around, Brother Fred, that hit some of you because you know now the reason why they won't fool with you or why they won't come or why they try to uh, hide from you. See, I need all, come, come a little closer. I need all the spiritual folk in here. Now, you know good and well, they've been owing you this money how long? Okay, a long time. <laughs> y'all, some of y'all got real serious about this because y'all, y'all up there trying to count. <laughs> it's, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. This is what I need you to do. Now, this is going to be easy said than done. We had a great discussion this afternoon, noon Bible study about this, but this is what I need you to understand. I need you to let them folk off the hook. Because it's been 10 years. They ain't gave you back your $100. And every time you go around, they, they ask, What's up, man? And they're gone. Hey, sis, how you doing? They act, they, they act funny. And in your mind, you know, you know you owe me that money. Huh? Yeah? See, all of y'all got real deep right now because y'all let, let them off. <laughs> Did he say let them off? Let them off. They are not going to pay you back. Repeat to me. They are not going to pay me back. Now, this is what's going to happen. It's going to bless you. Because not only are you releasing them, you're releasing yourself. Because every time you see them now, you feel some type of way. Not only do they try to hide from you, but you feel some type of way because you know them owe you some money. And the majority of the time, they family members. They family members. And let, and let, me, and let me bless some mama in here. Let me bless some mama in here. Who, who, every time, he, he ain't give you nothing for you no know, Mother's Day. He, he ain't been around in two months. But uh, every now and then, uh, hey, mama. Mama. And then she's, then, then sweet, sweet, then sweet talk mama. <laughs> and then somebody come along and say, what you give him some more money for? Well, you know he my baby. That nigga 53 years old. He is not no baby anymore. I just want to bless something something just told me. Just dropped it in my spirit. Said, bless some mama in here who whose son is taking them advantage of. Advantage of them. Yeah. I just want I just want to bless uh, uh, some some daughter. Some daughter who knows how to mama. Mama. And then what they do, they give you that guilt trip. See, so you ain't never been there for me. And that's about turn around. The house you living in, that car you, I paid the down. You talking about, I, 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 you have the audacity to say, I ain't been there for you? But we'll get drawn and sucked in. We start feeling bad for them. Okay, baby, this is the last time you lie. This is the last time I don't do it for you. I just felt I need somebody to have a release in here tonight. <laughs> Borrowing money ain't no problem. Now, here it is. Now, if you're on that side and you need to pay somebody back, then you need to go to them. God knows I hope they ain't in here. Don't look at them if they are. <laughs> Y'all all just inhaled and didn't breathe. Please breathe. I want you to die. Uh, but my pray they ain't in here. Lord, God, holy silent. I hope they ain't in here. But if they in here or what, if they out there, if you know you got somebody you need to pay money to and they in this church, you go to them and get this thing right. If they on your job, get it right. Amen? Because now you have heard the word. You shouldn't have came tonight. You heard now. Now God whoop them. Let them be convicted. Now, here we go. Bondage through debt. It's called credit card. Don't leave home without it. It's called credit card. It's called credit card. It's called credit card. Now, check this out. Credit is not bad. It's good to have credit. Now, if you are disciplined, it's good to have you a credit card. 
But here's what I'm learning, and this is what I'm, I'm continuing to be disciplined in, is that whenever you charge something on the credit card, make sure you do what? Pay it off before what? Before, before them 30 days. Not, if not, guess what? Interest accrues. accrues. So I'm learning. I'm, God knows I'm learning. I hope y'all learning too. But this is what, this what they get you at. If you pay it off a little bit, pay it off a little bit on time, guess what they say? Congratulations. We have upped your credit $1,500. You had a $2,000 lend. Now you got $3,500. Woo-wee. And you know good and well, if you can't pay off $200, if you can't pay off that within 30, don't put it on there. And that's where a lot of us have gotten in the trap. And what happens is when we can't pay this out, what we do, we get another credit card to pay that off. You ain't going to pay that off. You can go get something else. See, y'all just got real quiet right there. That lets me know I'm in your living room. Get ready to drink some tea. Uh, but it's called bondage through debt. That's why we can't shout right. That's why we can't smile right. That's why we, we just don't have no freedom in our lives because we're in bondage. It's a credit crisis. Go to Proverbs 22 and 7. And I want you to listen. This is what killed me. This is what hit me and killed me and just beat me. Listen to what Proverbs 22 and 7 said. Yeah. And the borrower is servant to the lender. That's why we be hiding when the master call. Right? And, and, what, and listen, if you got a way to get out of this, if they can consolidate, if they can do anything, you got a way to get out of this, get out. And what you got to learn how to do, what I'm learning how to do is, my lowest credit card bill, pay it off. Then after that, whatever you was paying that, go to the next credit card. It has, and we're going to get next week, we're going to talk about plans, how to do this. But again, you, ain't have, you don't have time to have bondage through debt. You can't, you can't I mean, I mean it's, you ought to be tired of going to the restaurant and looking through and say, oh, shit. I uh, can't get this. Uh, take this, okay. <laughs> and it's like you was good eating all that, eating that steak. You was good eating all that. And then, <laughs> and then when, they get, when you give them the credit card, see, I just hit a nerve. When, when you get the credit card, it's like all your conversations stop. So you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Just, whoo, just hot in here. <laughs> like, why didn't they brought that credit card back? They better not be back there stealing my money. No, you praying you got some money on it. <laughs> <laughs> then, then, then when they come back with a thing, thank you, sir. Woo, well, thank you. <laughs> you gonna leave a tip? I ain't leaving no tip. They ain't do that. See that? Y'all just y'all y'all just bad. <laughs> y'all bad. They ain't got nothing to do with that. Y'all start leaving some tips. <laughs> I know we got some light skinned brothers in here, but black folk start leaving some tips. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't doing that table. <laughs> I ain't doing that table. They're like, why? They ain't gonna leave no tip. <laughs> Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Am I right, nephew? I ain't, I ain't telling the truth. Won't leave no tips. And they even got it now. 10%, 15%, 18%. You're like, ooh, that's too much. I'm only two dollars. <laughs> Come on, y'all. That's trifling. Look at somebody say that's trifling. That's trifling. Don't go eat them. That's trifling. Them folk may be making two dollars an hour. Bless them. After you gonna change from tea to lemonade to Dr. Pepper back to water, then you want to you say, oh, I can't drink no Hennessy tonight. Wait, give me that. I mean, you gonna change? Have them running back? This cold. They ain't right. They ain't what I order. You better be glad they ain't spending your stuff by now. You better be nice to them folk. It's trifling. Trifling. Yes. Yes, sir. Pop. Yes. The poor car. That's right. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I, you're right. No, I ain't won't because I know you didn't get no money. Now, now, check this out. Have you ever been to a restaurant? And ain't, ain't nobody came to you yet? <laughs> okay, is it, uh, um, yes, may I help you? Uh, we ain't been waiting on. Oh, where's your waitress? Where's, let me go find them. Never come back. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, it's a stereotype. You better call it what it is because, again, we've been known not to give anything. Let the truth be known. Let's just, let's just call it for what it is. But again, Maybe I'm in so much bondage, I can't give. 
I want to give, but I can't. <laughs> Not with me? <laughs> and then we get to a point of more, 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 more. Go to Proverbs 25, 28. Find Proverbs 16, 18. Find Proverbs 21, 20. More and more and more. I tell you, this is going to bless us, y'all. This is going to bless this congregation. Even when we get to the teaching session in, 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 in uh, January, living, on, living off 80. It's going to tremendously bless us. More, more, more. More, more, more. More, more, more. I think all of us are guilty, maybe not now, but at some point, that it's like we needed more, more, more. We just weren't satisfied with what we had. What does Proverbs 25 and 28 say? Wow. So here I am, just out of control, broken down, deserted. I have no self-control. No self-control. You don't have to raise your hand. You can wink, but you don't have to raise your hand. When it comes to shoes, when it comes to pocketbooks, when it comes to suits, when it comes to ties, when it comes to cars, when it comes to anything, and you go shopping. And you said to yourself, I was, I, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and look. And you go in there and look. And then you look, you see something, oh, wee. Mm. And then what you do, you turn out, you go out, you go out, you go out of the store. You go out of the store, you walk around, that thing's still on you. Ain't nothing but the enemy. Ain't nothing but the enemy on you. Then he said, come on back. He come on back. You come on back. And then, uh, you know, you like me, you, you go to, you go to them brothers' places. And, hey, doc, you know what they say. <laughs> Ain't that right, Chris? You know how it is. Uh, say, doc, how, how much can you knock off of this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what he said. Especially, you got verse 9 ties and stuff like that. You know, how much you going to do? Oh, for you, $35. Can you do 25 You can do 25 I mean, and you was only looking for one. He said, oh, I tell you what, I had this one for $100. $100. So you go get that. You, you, you weren't going to just get that one. He, had, he added some more in. That was nice, brother Fred. $100. And then they say, but I got another deal for you. In the back, I have a nice suit for you. Look good in you. I give you a great deal. <laughs> I ain't want no polyester now. It's 100% war. I even got cotton suit. All right, let me see. See, and that, that's it. You're through. You're through. You're through. Bro, 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 Ed, what you told me, not tell my secrets, but I, I learned. You can have the same suit on. All you got to do, change, change your tie and your shirt. And every time you walk in, God, you got a new suit. Yes. But yes, don't tell all your suit. Say yes. Yeah. Same black suit. Just change it. God, you got a new suit. Yes. You got to know how to coordinate and how to adjust. Right? But again, you don't want to be out of control or don't have no self-control. You don't want to have a lifestyle that exceeds 80%. Go to go to sixteen eighteen. Who has it? That's right. So you got you got this. It's called about that pride, that haughty spirit. And so guess what? Can't nobody tell me, brother John, how to spend my money. It's my money. I made this money. Anybody gonna tell me how to spend my money? That's okay. Uh, when you don't have none. It'll talk to you. So that, that's a haughty spirit that says, I can get whatever I want to. I, I, I earned this money. How many of you have ever had that spirit? Come on, be honest. Yeah, yeah you're real. You're real. I can get whatever I want to get. Right? And then it started whooping that tail, didn't it? Yep. 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 Because it exceeded the 80%. And then you started having to dip in what belongs to God and dipping in to what you should be paying yourself. And just miserable. Looking fabulous, but miserable. Looking wonderful. Have everything you need, but just miserable. By yourself, miserable. And we're not, and you may have other folk in the house with you. But you just feel so alone. Just just feel bad. Like, why in the world did I get this? Y'all with me? Go to 2120. Who has it? Why is the Uh-huh. Wow. So, look at somebody asking, me, you a fool? <laughs> now, this 
is what the Bible say. The Bible is saying if we are exceeding 80%, we have become fools. We have become fools. And in that same text, of you go know, Proverbs 14, this is 14 1, where it says the one, the fool. 14 1 says uh, 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 a man who says that uh, there's no God in his heart is a fool. Well, what I just said was when I can do more and more and more and live beyond that, I'm just saying, God, I'm God. I don't care if it don't belong to you. I, it's mine today because I'm paying for it with my money. That's a fool. And all of us, if we're not still currently, have been fools. Fools. Avoiding debt. There we go. How do we get to a place of avoiding debt? Now again, we just set in the course because we're going to really do some more detailed how-to planning short range. And of course, we're really going to expand this um, during the January session. Um, Psalm 37, 21 says what? Psalm 37, 21 says what? Avoiding debt. And then someone find Luke 16, 12. Wow. Did y'all just hear that? Wow. Y'all, I need y'all to y'all need y'all come a little closer. Read that again. The wicked borrowing and do not repay. Hold up. So you <laughs> Jesus. Okay, I need y'all look. I, I need all y'all say folk come a little closer. This hit me. Watch this. He says what? The wicked borrow and do not repay. <laughs> so you mean to tell me if I've ever had a, 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 a something in default or I was delinquent on something? The Bible say you're wicked. I'm wicked. You're wicked. <laughs> <laughs> That's confession. <laughs> That's what it is, a wicked fool. Thank you, Mr. Crank. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? So if I have any accounts right now that's delinquent or have been, thank God if the Lord has blessed you to get out of that. But we have any delinquency. See, some of you getting real quiet looking like. You, you, you ain't writing no notes. You ain't, you ain't writing no notes. You just. <laughs> I'm messing with you. Because it does hurt. Because the Bible says, even though I'm portraying myself, I'm righteous. I'm, and that's why Jesus and the Bible talks a lot about money. Because money can destroy us. He says, if you don't repay, you're wicked. Preaching, wicked. Deacon, wicked. Pew member, wicked. Choir member, wicked. Going to heaven anyway. Anyhow, wicked. Wicked folk don't go to heaven. <laughs> see, see, this is what started messing with me because you got to not question the Bible. You mean to tell me if I'm living a life in debt, that can cause me not to go to heaven? See, okay, come on, come on a little closer. It's getting, it just got real, didn't it? It just got, knows it just got real. Because the Bible says, wicked. Mm -hmm. All I thought I had to do was come to church and pay tithes. The Bible says, if, if you don't pay back your debt, you are wicked. How can wicked go to heaven? See, it just got real. And when I read that, I said, wow, God, what, what are you saying? What are you saying? But then, but then look, at, look at the flip version of this. Watch this. What's that? But the righteous give generously. So the righteous gives generously. So I don't care what it is. I'm giving without a care because I have contentment in God. So I'm not stingy, I'm not holding back. Or, here it is, I'm not in bondage to debt to where I can't give. See, I really truly believe, can I help you out? I really truly believe it's not just that people don't want to do it. Reverend, it's like I'm in bondage where I can't. It's because I don't trust God to give him 10, 10, and make my lifestyle fit the principle. That's true. Because I still want more, more, more. And I still want more credit, credit, credit. Even though my credit is jacked up. 
Y'all with me? Yeah. And so he just said, if I'm wicked, see, we always, we, here we are, we talk about them big sins. You know the church's sins. We talk about them big sins. Them, them the only sin for some folk, people going to hell. According to this, if you don't pay back your debt, okay, do we have to read this again? <laughs> if you don't pay back your debt, on time, you're wicked. Lord have mercy. So you got to find a way to get out of this mess. Because I just decree and declare in this room, that's righteousness. Come on, you ought to speak over your whole life. Speak over your life. Say, no, I'm not wicked. I'm not wicked. I've done some wicked stuff. <laughs> but I ain't wicked. Cause, cause, and that means if I'm not wicked, that means I got to pay back. I got to pay back. I got to pay back because <laughs> I ain't want to be no wicked fool. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Oh, my God. I'll throw something at you, Pop. The Bible says do not steal. That, we're stealing because it does not belong to us. So here I am. I, you know what? We, we just a bunch of stick up folk, ain't we? We robbing from God. <laughs> we robbing from ourselves. And we rob it from other folk. We, we just wicked, foolish thieves. That's jacked up. Je Jesus. Think about it. We robbing God. Robbing from ourselves. And robbing other folk. They have the audacity to come in and say, won't he do it? Really? <laughs> you got to give him a chance to do it. You got to sow into him. You got to sow into yourself. And you got to pay back. So we shouting in wickedness. Singing in wickedness. Preaching in wickedness. Praying in wickedness. Oh God, won't you do it? I can't do it. You won't pay it back. I can't do it. You won't pay it back. God, won't you come through? I can't. You won't pay it back. <laughs> you see, when you begin to break down this text, it makes sense, don't it? God knows this is going to bless our congregation. God knows this is going to bless us, y'all. It's going to bless us. It's going to bless Luke 16, 12. And then we're going to end with the with the come to Jesus uh, list. We might have to have an altar call tonight. <laughs> Y'all, come on, follow me. Come on. <laughs> Go ahead, Luke 16, 12. It's going to bless because I want us to strip off this, what, this. We need to be authentic and transparent. We got to get through this. Even the ones who've already there, now you got to become teachers and help other folks how to get there. Don't just say, I got mine. You better get yours. No. Help us. Help us. Luke 16, 12 says what? And if you have not been faithful in what is another man, right? who would give you what is your own? See, that would hit me. You, we're praying, God, why, is it, why I can't never get over the hump? Why every time I turn around, I'm struggling with money? Why I can't, every time I, because God can't trust you. you, you God can't trust you with other folks' money. That's right. <laughs> That's right. From Visa to MasterCard to everybody else. God can't trust you with, they give you money, God can't trust you. How God going to give you more? That's right. I don't understand why I'm the only one getting left behind. Them drug dealers, they pay it back. <laughs> see, see, that's a whole nother level. That's a whole, he reigns, listen, y'all better come, come a little closer. He reigns on the just and unjust. They live in any kind of way, they pay it back. That's why I don't have no credit card that got big rolls of money. <laughs> See, y'all so spiritual in here. They pay it back. And God is not a God that he can lie. So he has to reign on the just and the unjust. Now the only thing is they have not accepted him as they pray. Or maybe they have. And they just live a carnal lives. But ain't that bad? That folk who ain't up in here every Sunday ain't up here doing what all of us doing. And still got more because they pay it back. That's sad. They're scared they're gonna get killed. <laughs> Maybe so. Yeah, that's right. But they paying it back. 
They paying it back though. Maybe we ought to be scared that we're going to go to hell because we wicked. <laughs> and you know what? You make something very plain. If you don't play about them jokers coming back to you, guess who else coming? And he's the judge. He's the judge. And it, it, was, it, was, it, was, and it is a reason why Jesus himself and the Bible talks about money a lot. It's a reason. And I think what other people have done, they have twisted it. Yeah, come on, bring that money in here. If you give $300 by in 300 days, your life going to... Don't believe that mess. Don't believe that mess. No, they, they ain't the type of stuff we hype up in here. My job is to make sure your life is blessed by telling you the truth. And all you got to do is take it now and do what you got to do. 10, 10, 80. Watch this. And we're going to go home. You don't have to raise your hand. You don't have to raise your hand. I want you, I want you to have to lie in here. But financial bondage can be caused by different things. Here it is. Here it is. How many apply to you? This is what we're going to really talk about right here. Here's, here's the kit. Planning. That's what we're going to deal with next week. Is it poor planning? Poor financial habits? Lack of discipline. I think these two right here. That, that discipline is 10, 10, 80. That's the, 10, that, that's, that's, that's the discipline. 10, 10, 80. That's the discipline. If I don't have no discipline, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to live off 100. You can't live off 100. You got to allow your lifestyle to fit the principle. So discipline and planning leads to this. Greed and patience. We're going to talk about that. A desire for status. You want people to see you flossing. <sighs> want everybody to look at you. Want everybody to say, ooh, you're clean today. Status. Fear for the future. Which means, I better get it now. You know, that sale golf next week. <laughs> it can be, it's that simple. Or, I don't know what's going to happen. You better save up everything now. Amen. Or lack of sound counsel. We, we don't never get any counsel about how to save money. How to budget. We don't. But that's going to change. Ignorance of God's word. Like those scriptures we lift tonight. A lot of us ain't never read those scriptures. And like, wow, really? I'm wicked if I don't pay it back. When I know I'm righteous. I know I've been changed. I know I'm God's child. But, but what are the principles that I'm not following? This is going to bless us, isn't it?